big. So right now thing. it's uh, 2 to 8 p.m., but it is subject to change. You know, Eric's back in the Weather Center right now um, going over the latest data. So we'll have to see if we have to adjust that time. It's still a couple of days away, and as we get some more high-resolution data in, we're probably going to get a better idea on the exact timing for the TV6 viewing area. But right now, this has been unchanged all week, a level 3 risk uh, for severe weather. And this one's a little different. Normally, large hail damaging wind are the primary threats. Right, and, and that's the big thing, folks, is, and that's why, I, you know, if you follow me on Facebook, um, if not, KWQC Kyle Dickens, <laughs> check out Kyle Dickens. Shameless, Shameless plug. plug. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but... I've been hitting it hard, probably harder than I would any event, yeah. because here's a couple reasons, folks. One, somebody said it to me the best. They said, severe weather, it literally snowed this morning, and <laughs> yeah. we're talking severe weather. Yeah, yeah, that's just how it works. It's mm -hmm. not about what we had 20, 48 hours ago. Yeah. Um, it, it, Mother Nature doesn't work that way. No. So we're talking the potential, I mean, a complete swing from today to Friday. So mm -hmm. we're talking about temperatures soaring into the 70s possibly dew yeah. points which are the measure of moisture in the air and uh, well, humidity is the measure of moisture in the air right. the dew point is at what temperature does the atmosphere have to get or do we have to get to be fully saturated yes and we're talking about dew points in the 60s and mid 60s possible you know it's normally really that wouldn't be a huge deal if, if we were in july but the fact that we're in late march heading into early april even upper 50s is yeah, pretty impressive exactly. for this time of year. So it doesn't take a lot of moisture this time of year if you have the right dynamics in place you, to get you, this threat yeah, of severe weather. I think that's the thing that you and I talked about too, Kyle, and, and I'm sure anybody that's uh, watching us now, uh, you've seen certainly with, uh, with more widespread outbreaks. Uh, and are we on full screen, Kyle? We're we are, yep. So you can see here on this map, it, you know, look how much uh, real estate is affected by this level three. It's going to be a widespread, it's not going to be just focused here on the TV6 viewing area. And I just want to point out that uh, you notice on the left side there that the level three enhanced risk means norm numerous severe storms are possible. I want to emphasize that all these areas shaded, you're not going to see severe weather. I think people are under the impression that, oh my gosh, I'm in that Absolutely. brown shading. Absolutely. I'm going to get severe weather. We had someone call in earlier under that assumption. And it, it just means that in any place shaded in this right. area, this is this is for a distance within 25 miles of a certain point. So it's not like a yeah. guarantee that this is going to happen, but the dynamics are there. Uh, the potential is there for these areas to see that severe weather. Absolutely. So, folks, that, that's a great, Kyle. That's a great point. And, and no matter, I, we've seen even. I will say this is definitely a significant event for us. Mm -hmm. But we've seen events like this. This is nothing. Like I said, our area is not uh, not immune to seeing these things. But no, uh, we're not. Not every hometown is going to be affected by this. This is not going to be a, a derecho event where every no. single person gets affected. What we're more concerned about with this is going to be tornadic activity. Now, here, here's the exact track weather flight. It's this low pressure that moves into the Rockies, really starts to deepen once it gets into the plains. You can see warm front and cold front. And as that approaches, we're kind of in the firing line here. And you can see here we are into Friday morning. And you can see we've got a little bit of activity that starts to fire up here. And that's going to help really set the stage. We get that, uh, uh, those few rain showers to leave some boundaries down. And then as that front uh, low pressure system and adjacent front moves off into parts of northeastern Iowa, you check these out. Here we are at 4 o'clock on Friday, and you can see this is what's concerning to us, and this is what mm. really stands out to me, is we are seeing uh, exact track, and this is a high-resolution model, and this is just the latest model run here, yeah. is putting out these individual discrete cells, and that is not good. No. That's an indication that we could be seeing uh, the possibility of supercell storms, and with those supercells, with the wind profiles that we have in place, which we'll talk about here in just a yeah. second, that is conducive for the development of tornadoes, and that is why we are concerned. And as we advance through, you can see those continue on, and although they're scattered uh, still, that's not what we want to see. No. If anything, we want to see these more in a line. Mm -hmm. Not that that's any better. Not no, that that is no. any better, but uh, when they're discrete like this, uh, that's a sign that uh, we could be talking about the potential uh, for uh, more of a tornadic uh, activity. Yes. Here, here's a long range model as well. We're going to look at this. This is uh, called the GFS model. And what we've got here is we, this looks a lot different than what we're showing there. And that's why we're showing you this on here is this is not something we would show to the public. No, absolutely not. Uh, what we're seeing here is the red is called CAPE. And what CAPE is is the measure of energy in the atmosphere. And as we get into Friday noon, that little wedge of energy 
starts to move into the eastern Iowa, northwestern Illinois. On top of that, these lines right here are called STP, that's Significant Tornado Parameter. As that tracks through, look at this. This is one o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. These are nearly maxed out as they make it into the QCA. This is very, very concerning. This is a new model run. And as that continues to track through, look at these numbers. I mean, this is, for this time of year, yeah. this is very intense. This is why we're concerned. This is why there is a first alert day in effect for Friday. That continues on through as it moves eastward, as it gets into the Chicagoland area. It does start to weaken a little bit and uh, more of a linear event. What we mean by that is more damaging winds. Mm -hmm. And on the back end of it, we're talking about snow. So quite the, quite the early it's spring a weather event Potent str sp uh, spring storm, that is for sure. And so now we're showing you exact track. So tomorrow we're just going to see an increase in cloud cover. You're going to notice that the winds are very gusty. Uh, we're going to have wind gusts upwards of 30 miles per hour tomorrow, but that'll be a warm wind. We're taking exact track through Friday. So here we are at 3 p.m. Uh, things are pretty quiet with storms firing to the west, but it's after that 2 to 3 o'clock time frame that yeah. these storms are going to start to take advantage of that energy and, and start to really area, explode. Yeah. Uh, and this is where we'll get our peak heating as well. So that peak heating is happening as that energy is building up. So the timing of this front is not really the best uh, case scenario for yeah. us because we're going to get these discrete uh, cells to potentially develop. Could these converge into a line? Potentially, but yeah. the signs are that this is going to start off more as a supercellular type event. And then, as you were mentioning, Kyle, as that front marches eastward, it'll turn more into yeah, a Yeah, and I think one thing, Kyle, you and I were talking about here is how close these models, we look at about... Uh, I think anywhere from eight to ten different computer models, different from different countries, and they're all coming out with a, di a very similar output. And that is scary to us because usually we see one or two what we call outliers that say, okay, this is going to be different. They're all agreeing on this yeah. scenario, and it hasn't changed much since we started talking about this on Monday. That is the big concern. And here we go, that dry slot out ahead of it, that helps warm things up. That's not what we need. That no. helps increase that thunderstorm energy and really makes this a really a, what we call a loaded gun scenario for these super suns. And you see, you see the winds there on the bottom left of the screen, 31 miles per hour, that's outside of thunderstorms. Yeah. So we have uh, a lot of strong winds here at the surface, a lot of strong winds aloft, so these storms are going to be racing off to the east and northeast. So it doesn't give you much time to prepare. These storms will be moving at about 50 miles per hour, maybe even more than that. So once a warning is issued, you're going to have to take a, a, a quick action Absolutely. because you're not going to have much time to do that. And this is uh, what we've got here, Kyle, is this is our, our same what we call the graph model. It's, it's one of our exact track uh, models that we use here in-house. What we have where you see the yellow, this is a different output. This is a uh, more high-resolution output of that parameter we call the STP. That's Significant Tornado Parameter. And you can see here as these storms start firing, here we are at 4 o'clock on Friday, as these storms start firing, that STP, this is a different model output, is showing a really a high-end uh, parameter here for mm -hmm. our area. We don't usually see this. Now, one thing I'd like to note too, Kyle, and you would agree with me on this, just because we're showing that right now, okay, here at 4.30, yes. there's a storm moving through Muscatine. That is, this is not <clears throat> anything set in stone. This is just showing how this is probably going to play out. I can tell you it, it will change. And, uh, yeah. and, and there we go. There's a boundary that forms a little uh, boundary there on the back end of that, and as that continues through, uh, we start to weaken that STP once it makes its way through, and then that cold front uh, comes through on the back end of that. So, uh, so that, that severe threat will be there as long as you are ahead of that cold front. And again, by Friday night into Saturday morning, start to see that cold air wrap in and uh, bring in the potential for some mm -hmm. snow. But this is our uh, thunderstorm energy uh, that we were talking about. This is the Cape. It's called convective available potential energy, but we'll just call it uh, thunderstorm energy. And uh, you can see we're kind of in that moderate uh, area for the energy. So it's not extremely high, but it's high for late March standards. Yeah, and, and it's maximized here at 3, 4 o'clock when we're reaching that peak heating of the day. So, you know, temperatures are going to start off in the 50s on Friday, and you're going to start to feel that humidity or that mugginess come in with those dew points getting in the 50s right. and low 60s. And what's interesting, Kyle, and what you and I have talked about here is what sometimes we see, and why this is, to me, a little bit more concerning, is we've seen situations like this, setups like this, and the Cape is just, we have a ton of energy. And Off what the charts tends to almost. happen with that, when we have 
way it's i mean the energy is just crazy we're talking about energy uh, in the uh we it measures in uh joules per, per kilogram, kilogram which is some <laughs> not gonna go into details <laughs> on that but um you know this is what we're showing now is anywhere around a thousand to fifteen hundred mm -hmm. joules per, per kilogram which is which is an ample energy enough yeah absolutely to keep these thunderstorms going. anytime we get above a thousand yeah. especially this time of year it's, it's pretty good but. but what we've seen before with these similar setups is we've seen the energy levels uh, in the 2,500 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. And at that point, what happens sometimes is you get too much convection or too much storm development in the morning. And what this shows us is it's a narrow time frame of energy, mm -hmm. but right at the, at the right time for storms to develop. So that's concerning in itself. And then that, uh, as that cold front comes through, zaps the energy. Now, th the biggest thing here, this is a, a little explainer, and I forgot to put a stop in it, <laughs> but uh, uh, what we're going to show you here, folks, is so you saw that cloud. As the clouds rise, this is what the wind profiles, if you mm -hmm. were to take the atmosphere and slice it in half, okay? This is what it's going to look like on Friday, okay? Where at the surface, the white arrows are winds coming in, screaming in from the southeast, okay? In the mid-levels... We have winds more south, southerly, maybe just south, southwesterly. Mm -hmm. And then the jet stream is coming out of the <laughs> west-southwest. And it's like a paddle wheel effect, okay? Imagine you're the updraft in that thunderstorm, okay? As the jet stream, all these wind uh, directions and all these wind speeds come into play, we know we're going to have enough energy to produce a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. And as that thunderstorm starts to rise, as that updraft starts to elongate, it's going to start to spin because this is what the wind profiles look like in the atmosphere. And when that happens, you get that updraft to spin, and there we have tornadic activity. And that is our biggest concern out of this whole thing is that we have a lot of shear Lots available of shear. in the atmosphere. So even if we can get some limiting factors, mm -hmm. there will still be somewhat of a case where we could still see enough shear to produce some tornadoes so that is and, our concern you know a lot of times we say that uh you know lack of sunshine can can squash severe weather don't think that's necessarily going to happen this go around just because of the amount of shear that we have um but you know i guess any lack of sunshine will be will be good news as far as getting you know less severe sure. storms but uh again kyle you kind of emphasize that things are going to change um, and, and we're going to continue to keep track of this here over the next couple of days. Because keep in mind, we're, we're Wednesday. This is still about 48 hours out. Right, exactly. As with any sort of storm that we track, we always tell you to stay tuned because things can change. L let's take last Saturday, for example. <laughs> things <laughs> yeah, change. Hey, 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 I don't want to hear it. You, <laughs> things, you were off. I was so you, off. You, you get the, you get the But things, <laughs> things changed very yeah. quickly. And um, so it's just very important to stay up to date uh, with the forecast. Absolutely. And so the biggest thing, and that's what I wanted to emphasize, where you talked about, we're not looking at, okay, if we get some morning activity, morning convection, mm -hmm. yeah, that could limit the threat, but still, if, if all this plays out, we'll still be talking about the severe weather threat. If the low pressure and the system can slow down and not make it to us at the time it does, we could be talking about a threat in central Iowa. Mm -hmm. And not in what it get, once it gets here, we're talking about it dying out. And that is the best case scenario. And that's for a good us, point. And, and that's Central Iowa. right. And that's kind of um, been a trend that we've noticed. I, I would say within the last twenty four hours, it did slow down a little bit, not necessarily in our favor, but uh, it did kind of slow down a little bit. So the the shift uh, in the highest threat of severe weather did go a little bit west into right. Central Iowa, but we're still kind of in that gun, as, as you saw based on our models. Yeah. That so the biggest thing, it. yeah, the biggest thing, folks, is. Stay weather aware. We're putting, again, first alert day is in effect for, for 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. on Friday. Know where you're going to be. Know where, it, if you're at work, if you're at school, if you're going to be at home. Know what to do if a warning is issued for your area. Mm -hmm. And that's all. You don't, don't cancel your plans. Don't worry about it. Uh, just be prepared and be ready if a warning is issued. That's, that's the best advice we can give you. Absolutely, and uh, Eric is back in the Weather Center uh, putting together the forecast here, getting the latest data, and uh, him and Kyle are going to have updates coming up at 4, 5, and 6. And, of course, you can get weather information anytime at kwqc.com, 24-7 live stream we have going on QC there as well, app, the yeah. QC Weather app, lots of ways to stay updated. Absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll keep you ahead of this, and we'll get you through it. It's, uh, again, like what you said, Kyle, I know there's people worried out there about what could happen, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't want you to be worried. We just want you to be prepared, and um, we're going to keep you ahead of the storm. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for uh, tuning in, and uh, we will continue with updates on our newscast later this evening. Have a great evening.